Morning all. I'm delighted that one of you has already taken me up on the uh, game request promotion for chessworld.net. Matthias, uh, Matthias Solomon. Um, there's interesting stories attached to both games uh, which I would like to cover. So the first game, um, in his introduction, uh, basically Matthias um, indicates that uh, he is 28 years old himself, he lives in Sweden, has been playing chess for three and a half years. The first game he's submitting is dedicated to Ingmar, a warm and kind friend at his chess club who unfortunately unexpectedly died in his sleep the night before June the 1st. He wasn't even 48 years old. So Ingmar was the kind of player who could draw with a Fide master and lose to a beginner. And this game we're about to see exemplifies his very peculiar playing style and it won the vote for the game of the year at his chess club just one week before he passed away. The evening of the 31st of May, he played his last tournament, a rapid chess event with time handicap, and won. He left the playing hall, as always, with a smile on his face. We, the players at Visby Chess Club, will always miss you, Ingmar. So this is Ingmar playing white against Roger Wesberg. Ingmar Gustafsson, 1558, against Roger Wesberg, 1326. Let's have a look at the game. So knight f3, the Reti opening. D5, and now G3, an early Fincetto. Bishop G2, B6. Okay, Bishop B7, White Castles, and now Knight D7. B3, a double Fincetto. So both bishops will be striking across the center like this. This formation um, has sometimes even been, been used by Kasparov in, in critical games against Karpov. I remember a, a double Fincetto game. Uh, one of the last critical games of a World Championship match once, which Kasparov managed to win in the end. He ne really needed to. So, e5, bishop b2. Now, black commits the pawn forward with e4. Okay, knight e1. So, can this pawn chain be undermined later? The undermineable points will be d3 or c4. Knight g f6. And now... An unusual looking move, bishop h3, taking this diagonal, putting pressure on d7. Maybe also knight g2 to f4 might be on the cards. After bishop d6, actually we see f4, which is tempting black maybe to take here, which black does. Eat, but it also marks out the e5 square for that bishop, so it's getting a bit of a, a dark square grip. So it's taken, and after the knight takes f3, okay. Uh, white has also now got some potential uh, upsides of this. Potential pressure on that f file, semi an f file. And maybe an exchange sacrifice could be later on the cards. If black castled kingside, it might be quite dangerous on this diagonal. Black played queen e7, not committing yet to casting kingside, and revealing an intention that maybe finding shelter on the queen side. After a4, black decides, even with a4, to still castle queen side here. a5, and now keeping the lines closed seems uh, sensible. And b5 was played, so doesn't want to give white that a file. a6, now is this pawn going to be a dangerous fawn pawn? Bishop c6, okay. As Kasparov has once mentioned, you know, pawns around the opponent's king can sometimes act as extra attacking pieces. Will this be the case in this game? e3 maintains the dark square grip, particularly on the d4 square. And, uh, okay, also puts a break on d4, which would liberate this bishop, perhaps dangerously, against white's king. King b8. And now knight d4. Okay. And if the bishop goes back, then b5 will drop. So knight e5 defending the bishop. Now in this position, a very interesting move indeed is played. Rook takes f6. So this is weakening black's control actually of d5 here. In this position, g takes f6 is chosen. Maybe with the idea, maybe if black gets time, this g file could be dangerous for the white king. But the idea is now revealed. Knight takes c6, knight takes c6, and now queen e2. Very difficult to parry this threat now of queen e2. 
and that form pawn is really emphasized as a mating unit to mate on b7 here. So black plays a very desperate looking move just just to avoid immediate disasters here. He plays knight d4, a resourceful move though. After bishop takes d4, now protects with c6. Also, it means the queen is coming into the attack. Okay, but now rook a5, prompting the idea of a brutal rook sacrifice to open up that king again. So access paths, you know, like this. And we're going to see another access path soon revealed. Queen c7, the rook sacrifice is played. And if it's not taken, if the king a8 then rook b7 it's taken check king a8 queen takes d5 check opening up this diagonal now rather brutally king b8 check remember this bishop's guarding c8 the king cannot escape to c8 king a8 and now bishop g2 the bishop returns now on this diagonal with the size of effect black played queen b7 so now queen takes b7 mate so a very interesting game, um, sense for video annotation, um, and a great story behind it. And unfortunately, you know this 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 player who played very interesting games, um, but uh, this this was one of them. Uh, you know, passed away recently. Okay, um, so. As Ingmar says, we the players of Vishby, Visby Chess Club will always miss you, Ingmar. Okay, comments or questions on this game? Thanks very much. Mattis's second game is his own final game of last year's season. Mephius writes, I was at the time a rather mediocre chess player. After two years of playing, I was struck at a stable rating of about 1450. Not very impressive. Then for personal reasons I decided to quit drinking alcohol. This had a dramatic effect on my playing strength. All of a sudden I started winning game after game and my rating increased no less than 221 points in four months. The crowning achievement was winning the town championship two points ahead. This is the final game of the tournament, a very pleasant memory for me. I'm not usually the most aggressive of players but that day I felt inspired. Despite the fact that my opponent somehow missed Black's uh, winning move, um, which, uh, okay, we'll reveal after, or we could mention here, I'll reveal it after. It's definitely my proudest moment as a chess player. The 27th of this month, I've been completely sober for 18 months, Mafias writes. Okay, well done, Mafias, for, for keeping me sober. Um, we had world champions like Alakine also uh, a bit prone to uh, uh, alcohol, which uh, will be coming up in the Evolution of Style series, which I should continue soon. Um, so anyway, so d4 for Matthias, and his opponent played knight f6. After c4, we get into a king's engine defense. Classical variation. So e5 now. White castled. We have mainline classical so far, and now the dreaded bayonet attack. This has become one of the most respected systems against the king's engine, accelerating the queen side assault. The exploitable base of the pawn chain, the d6, the most easily exploitable, would help white peel open the c file, and that could be a target for things like knight b5 or even bishop a3 later. As well as an infiltrating knight could pick up the light square bishop and usually renders black's king sign intentions much more harmless. Black played here h6, okay, avoiding knight g5 stuff later on, but uh, c5, knight h5, and now rook e1, okay, which is sensible looking move, looks like grandmaster play so far. After f5, knight d2, hitting that knight on h5, it goes to f4, and the bishop neatly tucks away on f1. Black continues with g5 now. Okay, so it looks like a typical king's Indian defense position so far. Knight c4, putting pressure now on d6, and also this part of the chain as well, e5. Black took on e4, 
which looks as though it's weakening maybe d5, maybe, but uh, the, the main point usually is to use the f5 square for something like this, or to put pressure on e4. Knight takes e4, but actually black seems to be interested in d5 with his next move, d takes c5. Okay, but white now pushes forward with d6, which opens up, of course, this diagonal and leaves quite a dangerous looking knight now after c takes on d6 here. So queen b3 check looks a bit dangerous. Of course white's also threatening the c5 pawn. Black does something about that here, plays c takes b4. We have now a check after king h8, bishop c4. So now there's a very uh, real threat of knight f7 winning the exchange. Queen a5, knight f7 check is played, king h7. And then we see bishop b2. Okay, so white has got beautiful pieces for the pawn sacrifices actually. And black's kingside intentions have been completely distracted as well. Completely different type of game now. These knights look very dangerous and strong. What did black play here? Knight c6. And now actually black's king safety is worsened with this next move a knight sacrifice knight f takes g5 tearing apart a bit the black king so n double um, taking on g5 check king g6 okay and now the queen transfers to g3 dangerous threats indeed after knight h5 we have queen h4 here and white is threatening many things now in this position. Bishop d3 looks to be on the cards, for instance. Maybe even g4 to assist in the attack. If the knight ever moved, there might be dangerous things. But uh, white's got to be careful of not losing this knight. Rook f4, attacking the queen and the bishop. Bishop d3 check is used. King h6. And now, in this position, Okay, the dangerous looking move, g4, is played here. g4, okay. And um, in this position, black plays bishop takes g4. Let's have a quick look from an engine point of view what's going on here if rook takes g4 queen takes g4 bishop takes g4 there's knight f7 mate very very clever stuff <laughs> So bishop takes g4 was played. So if the rook is distracted away from f7, that's like a weakness of the last move. That knight f7 will be a smothered mate. So bishop takes g4. And now Matthias plays knight f7 check. Forcing the next reply, rook takes f7. There doesn't seem to be any other choice here. Queen takes g4, now threatens mate on g6. It's parried with rook f6, but now bishop c1 check. And here, black resigned. Let's have a look at a potential defense with knight f4, just to make sure what's going on here. If knight f4 is mating one with queen h4, if rook f4, it's, it will be queen g6. So that was a very, very good game. It was very dynamically played. And I think, to be honest, they were impressive games in their own right. Uh, Matthias writes, as though they weren't, but I think they are. And, and thank you, Matthias, for sharing the stories connected to the games. Matthias also thanks m me, uh, and um, he thought um, 
Also, correspondence style chess would be rather dull, but uh, he's only been a member for a couple of days now, and he's already playing 131 simultaneous games on the site. It's seriously more addictive than Facebook, Matthias writes. So, okay, um, I, 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 I hope uh, everyone's enjoyed this. I've, I've enjoyed these two games, especially with the notes. I think this is setting some kind of standard, actually, that, um, okay, if, if you want to send me two games in these early days, please do, uh, and on the assumption if you become a chessworld.net full member in the summer and I'll try and uh, do a video like this of both games but ideally send me some notes uh, which give you know interesting story around the games and um, adds a lot more interest but let's have a look at this game once more this this second game so King's Engine played really really uh, dynamically and aggressively with the bayonet attack uh, letting that d5 um, be pressured for d6 so these diagonals will be opened up against the black king this game really is about access paths as well to the opponent's king bishop b2 now stripping open and transferring you know the queen aggressively to the king side like this it's not usually a common uh, thing except maybe in towel games against the king's engine he manages to transfer to the opponent's king for him to get the attack but this g4 is just an amazing move here It's amazing for this knight f7, beautifully logically uh, targeted move to try and get the rook to play rook takes g4. For that queen takes g4 and that knight f7. So bishop takes g4, knight f7, and then the attack crashes through again. Now, the, the defense mentioned actually black's winning move uh, was on t move 25. Apparently, there was a, a winning move. After queen h4, black had queen d8. I don't know if this has already been engine checked. I assume so. Queen d8. Yes, would give black an advantage, it seems. Okay. Games have technical flaws when you put it for an engine. So, blah, huge blunder here. F4. So, check. And then g4. I mean, these, these, this g4 is, is computer incisive move. G4, it's absolutely the best move in the position of checking this here. One of the best moves anyway. Knight F7 is also good. But it come, G4 comes later there. So brilliant stuff here. Okay, so Queen D8 would leave White struggling, perhaps. Okay, but uh, great game. So thanks, uh, Matthias. I uh, hope everyone enjoyed that. Comments or questions on YouTube. And remember, if you become a full member over the summer... Send me two game requests. I might be able to do two, actually, because I haven't been inundated as of yet. But when I do, it will have to be changed to one. But for the moment, two game requests, that would be cool. Thanks very much.